Will you pledge that by January 2013, the end of your first term, more than five years from now, there will be no U.S. troops in Iraq? I think it's hard to project four years from now, and I think it would be irresponsible. We don't know what contingency will be out there. What I can promise is that if there are still troops in Iraq when I take office, which it appears there may be unless we can get some of our Republican colleagues to change their mind and cut off funding without a timetable, uh, if, if, if there's no timetable, then I will drastically reduce our presence there to the mission of protecting our embassy, protecting our civilians, and making sure that we're carrying out counterterrorism activities there. I believe that we should have all our troops out by 2013, uh, but I don't want to make promises not knowing what the situation is going to be three or four years out. Senator Clinton, Democrats all across the country believed in 2006 when the Democrats were elected to the majority in the House and Senate that that was a signal to end the war and the war would end. You have said that you will not pledge to have all troops out by the end of your first term, 2013. Why not? Well, Tim, it is my goal to have all troops out by the end of my first term. Uh, but I agree with Barack. It is very difficult to know what we're going to be inheriting. You know, we do not know, walking into the White House in January 2009, what we're going to find. What is the state of planning for withdrawal? That's why last spring I began pressing the Pentagon to be very clear about whether or not they were planning to bring our troops out. And what I found was that they weren't doing the kind of planning that is necessary, and we've been pushing them very hard to do so. You know, with respect to the question, though, about the Democrats uh, taking control of the Congress, I think the Democrats have pushed extremely hard uh, to change this president's course in Iraq. Uh, today, uh, I joined uh, with many of my colleagues in voting for Senator Biden's uh, plan, uh, slightly different than he'd been presenting it, but still the basic structure was uh, to move toward what is a de facto partition if the Iraqi people and government so choose. The Democrats keep voting for what we believe would be a better course. Unfortunately, as you know so well, the Democrats don't have the majority in the Senate to be able to get past that 60-vote uh, blockade that the Republicans can still put up. But I think every one of us who is still in the Senate, Senator Biden, Senator Dodd, Senator Obama, and myself, we are trying every single day. And of course, Congressman Kucinich is in the House. But I think it is fair to say that the President has made it clear he intends to have about 100,000 or so troops when he leaves office, the height of irresponsibility that he would leave this war to his successor. I will immediately move to begin bringing our troops home when I am inaugurated. Senator Edwards, will you commit that at the end of your first term in 2013, all U.S. troops will be out of Iraq? I, I, I cannot make that commitment. I, well, I can tell you what I would do as president. If I, when I'm sworn into office come January of 2009, if there are, in fact, as General Petraeus uh, suggests, 100,000 American troops on the ground in Iraq, I will immediately draw down 40 to 50,000 troops. And over the course of the next several months, continue to bring our combat troops out of Iraq until all of our combat troops are, in fact, out of Iraq. I think the problem is, and it's what you've just heard discussed, is we will maintain an embassy in Baghdad. That embassy has to be protected. Uh, we will probably have humanitarian workers in Iraq. Those humanitarian workers have to be protected. I think somewhere in the neighborhood of a brigade of troops will be necessary uh, to accomplish that, 3,500 to 5,000 troops. But I do say, I, I want to add to things I just heard, I think that it's true that everyone up here wants to take a responsible course to end the war in Iraq. There are, however, differences between us, and those differences need to be made aware. Good people have differences about this issue. Uh, for example, I heard Senator Clinton say on Sunday that she wants to continue combat missions in Iraq. To me, that's a continuation of the war. I do not think we should continue combat missions in Iraq. And when I'm on a stage with the Republican nominee come the fall of 2008, I'm going to make it clear that I'm for ending the war. And the debate will be between a Democrat who wants to bring the war to an end, get all American combat troops out of Iraq, and a Republican who wants to continue the war. Senator Dodd, you've heard this discussion. Where do you come down? Well, Tim, I, the question is not just how do you bring the troops out, but why are we there? As President of the United States, your first responsibility is to guarantee the safety and security of the American people. And so the question you must ask yourself as President 
Is the continuation of our military presence enhancing that goal? I happen to believe very strongly uh, that this policy of ours, military involvement in Iraq, is counterproductive. We're less safe, less secure, more vulnerable, and more isolated today as a result of the policy. So I believe that we ought to begin that process of redeployment uh, here. I would simultaneously engage in the kind of robust diplomacy that's been totally missing from this administration to enhance our own uh, interests in the region as well as to provide some additional security for Iraq. You can do this, Tim. Practically can be done. By military planners can tell you can move a brigade to a brigade and a half, maybe even two a month out of Iraq. So the time frame we're talking about is critical. But Congress has an obligation here. It's not enough that we just draft timetables. The Constitution gives the Congress of the United States a unique power, and that is the power of the purse. As long as we continue drafting these lengthy uh, resolutions and amendments here, talking about timelines and dates, we're not getting to the fundamental power that exists in the Congress, and that is to terminate the funding of this effort here, give us a new direction. As everyone who's looked at this issue over the last two or three years has concluded, there is no military solution here, and we need to do far more to protect our interests, not only in that region, but throughout the world. We're not doing it with this policy. I want to put you on the record. Will you pledge, as Commander-in-Chief, that you will have all troops out of Iraq by January of 2013? I will get that done. You'll get it done? Yes, I will, sir.